Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Arena gameplay video. Today we're checking out the Midweek Magic Lord of the Rings block constructed basically, so you're only allowed to play cards from the Lord of the Rings expansion and I've built this blue-red wizard's deck to try out and it's basically a spells deck looking to eventually take over the game with Gandalf the Grey and with Storm of Saruman and of course we're also playing the One Ring which remains one of the best cards in the format especially when you play multiples and you can just play another copy to sacrifice the first one to the legendary rule so you don't end up taking too much damage from it and then uh, the rest of our deck includes some early Tempted by the Ring cards, including Birthday Escape, which lets us draw a card. There's Ranger's Firebrand as a cheap removal spell to deal 2 damage. We also have the uh, Smite the Deathless at 2 mana, dealing 3 damage at instant speed, potentially exiling a creature in the process and removing Indestructible, so perfect for taking out the Witch King. We've got a few counter spells as well, two copies of Stern Scolding, which is pretty well positioned in this format since it can counter some pretty expensive creatures like the various Nile School, which uh, if you get to play 9 copies in a deck can be quite powerful, so a 1 mana answer to those is perfect. can also answer opposing copies of let's say a Gandalf, Friend of the Shire, which has 2 power, not that I've encountered that one very often, but just goes to show how versatile Stern Scolding can be. And then I'm not playing any of the 2 mana counter spells for creatures, just because there are quite a few decks that don't have a high density of creatures and even if they do they tend to be countered by a stern scolding anyway and then we've got plenty of removal for creatures so we don't need to count too much on our counter spells for those but i do like four copies of saruman's trickery as it is a key way of countering and opposing one ring for instance so the opponent doesn't get to draw a million cards and then it also lets us amass orcs one to make an army token which is actually quite relevant it can turn into a ring bearer with birthday escape and ranger's firebrand and once we get to a level 4 ring bear it can actually deal quite a bit of damage as you can see dealing three additional damage whenever it hits the opponent and also with Gandalf friend of the Shire we want to have some other creatures in play that can become the ring bear so that we get to draw a card with Gandalf so that can also be quite nice Gandalf otherwise a 4 mana 2 4 with flash letting us cast our sorceries at instant speed so it can also be nice alongside birthday escape and firebrand especially when we have a storm of Saruman on the battlefield this 6 mana enchantment has a ward 3 so pretty difficult for the opponent to answer and says whenever we cast our second spell each turn copy it except the copy isn't legendary and we can choose new targets for the copy so this also works on creatures if we copy a creature it becomes a token and that token's not legendary anymore so we can potentially have two copies of a Gandalf friend of the Shire or two copies of Gandalf the Grey on the battlefield which can close out the game very quickly and by casting two spells in the opponent's turn we can potentially trigger Storm of Saruman once again so that's where being able to cast some of our sorceries during the opponent's turn can also give us an extra advantage and then another reason to play all these wizards is that we get to play flame of anor a three mana instant that can potentially deal five damage to a creature you can also just use it to draw two so perfect to play alongside our trickery just keep up three mana if the opponent doesn't play anything worth countering we can draw two instead can also destroy an artifact with it as one of the options and that can be very useful against the horn of gondor which can otherwise make an army of a one one tokens and then if we control a wizard we get to choose two of the three modes instead so we can maybe kill a creature and draw two cards which is incredibly powerful and then we can also maybe copy our flame not only with storm of saruman but also with again of the gray five mana three four says whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell choose one mode that hasn't been chosen can either tap or untap target permanent maybe tap an opposing creature down when we cast an instant during the opponent's turn to prevent it from attacking could also untap our own land after casting a spell to have access to one more mana then the second mode is to deal three damage to each opponent we could also copy an instant or sorcery spell we control and choose new targets so that's where we can also maybe copy our flame of anor and then the final mode is to put Gandalf on top of its owner's library so we can maybe redraw it and then start copying spells once again after replaying it. Can also be useful if our opponent tries to remove Gandalf and we have some other instant available like maybe a flame or a smite that way we can put Gandalf back on top of our deck instead of losing it which can also be worth it. And then a spiteful banditry is our sweeper of choice dealing x damage to each creature and then potentially make treasure tokens when opposing creatures die. A bit of a nombo with their own smite the deathless which exiles the creature in the process but that's usually an advantage so we'll take the loss on that one 
And then of course four copies of the One Ring as our main card draw engine. Happy to aggressively use it if I have a second copy in hand so we can eventually replace it so we don't take too much damage. And the turn we play it it can also save us from a massive attack from the opponent which is quite useful. Another card we could play in this deck as an extra win condition is Fiery Inscription and it's possible that it's just a more efficient win condition than a Storm of Saruman but getting two copy spells is always fun so I'm trying this out instead. And then a mana base is definitely one of the weak points of this deck since there's no great dual land options. You could play Shire Terrace, but that one you need to sacrifice before it fetches up another land. You could play some of the basic land cyclers as well, which can maybe fix your mana, but I prefer just playing a higher land count, so we're playing 26 lands here to make sure we can keep hitting those land drops and get the double blue for Saruman's Trickery in time. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's not amazing, but I'll keep Cycle a birthday escape, or we could hang on to it, but I might want to find some cheaper interaction here since I don't have anything going on on turn two. Facing a blue deck with the Rivendells, their opponents also may be ready to play a longer control game. Also blue-red, so it could be the mirror match. And a Quarrels End discards Flamesmith makes a 1-1. Could take it out here, but... Not a big deal. Okay, maybe ambush it with Gandalf. I'll take one. And then just take my turn. Don't want to tap out for the one ring into four open mana. So could go for an ambush. Chances of Gandalf resolving are pretty low, so maybe I just uh, let damage happen, see if our opponent wants to tap out, and if not, I'll maybe get this countered so we can resolve our one ring. And Glorious Gale counters Gandalf. Okay, let's uh, try the one ring. So let's just go for this. Hang on to escape to maybe trigger our five mana Gandalf. Okay, one ring resolved. And then tempted to just pass. Don't have to draw with the ring just yet. But it is an option. Opponent could scry with Rivendell since they control legendary. Flame of Honor is not gonna work here since our ring is indestructible. But nice try. Yeah. Opponent escapes. If they had cast into the fire, that would exile our ring instead, so that would work. Bone gets to draw and discard. And sure, let's go ahead and draw. We have a backup one ring, so I'm not too worried about taking a lot of damage. So we don't have a whole lot going on, might be time to finally cycle this birthday escape. Unless I want to just draw two with the one ring, which may also be fine. Would love to find one of our creatures. And there's Gandalf. Okay. So we can play Gandalf, play Birthday Escape and copy it at the very least. Assuming Gandalf resolves. And if it doesn't, we can try again next turn. This one sadly doesn't have flash. So let us copy target instant or sorcery. We get to draw two. And our ring goes to level three here. We'll have to discard to hand size. And our opponent cries. We won't be able to block the opponent's ring bearer. But next turn I might finally pull the trigger on Smite the Deathless. Okay, Bilbo's next. And we'll take one here. Poton gets to draw and discard. And they're playing Deceive the Messenger as well. Is this another Flame of Anor to take out Gandalf? Improvised club instead. Fair enough. So your opponent's 
Gets to now deal additional damage with her soldier. Alright, so Banditry could also be a fine solution here. And then hang on to Smy to maybe copy with Gandalf. So sure, let's Banditry x equals 1. It is a bit of a nombo with Smite the Deathless since it exiles, so we don't get to make a treasure token if we kill an opposing creature. But we do get one now. And then what I could do is just draw with the one ring, play replacements, so we don't take more damage. I think I want to keep up Saruman's Trickery for at least one turn. And then we'll wait and see if we want to draw with the one ring or not. Okay, opponent wants to draw three. Could deny that. Sure. Get to a mess. And then it's probably worth it to just activate the one ring once again. So I can draw four before playing my replacement ring. No shortage of cards in hand. And then attack for one after maybe casting a Firebrand. That way we get to deal additional damage here as well. That seems fine. So we can start pressuring the opponents. I could play main phase Gandalf, in which case I might have wanted to play it before casting my... Uh, a Ranger's Firebrands, so I could have uh, drawn an extra card. But I might just do it now, so I have to discard fewer cards to hand size. Or I can just uh, discard a bunch of lands here, which is also fine. Since we'll easily find more. And then flashing Gandalf end of turn. And our opponent has seen enough. All right, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Smite into Trickery. Got our one ring. Facing blue-green. Could be a ramp deck. For now, a deliberation, so maybe elves to scry a bunch. Can draw two with flame. Picked up another trickery. And a Celeborn. Yeah, that doesn't really bother me. Can just uh, draw two with flame. And then next turn maybe smites Celeborn. Now I'm also liking Gandalf as a potential play. If I don't want to discard to hand size, I would have to play something now. And uh, yeah, both Gandalf and the One Ring are reasonable. And then next turn we can maybe Spiteful Banditry to wipe the board. So let me main phase just play Gandalf. So I don't have to commit the One Ring just yet. Go and place a Legolas. And uh, yeah, Banditry for three is looking good. Our opponent gets to draw off Deliberation. And a mountain, that's unexpected. Well, I'll be able to keep up Stern Scolding now as well. After we make a treasure. So our opponent gets one turn to resolve something scary before we go Shields up on Trickery. I'll label on so we can scold. Not really lore accurate. And then now we've got double trickery available. So hit for two. Question is whether we want to tap out for the one ring, but it doesn't seem necessary. We're ahead on board with two counter spells in hand. Can play Firebrand at instant speed thanks to Gandalf. Would love to trickery first, so we can then maybe tempt the ring onto the 1-1 orc to draw a card. 
So Gimli seems fine to let resolve, even though I would like to make an army, since we can just smite it here. Opponent's got Gimli's Fury, that's pretty lore accurate. Let's uh, Trickery. And now we get our army. Could have kept up red mana, but that's alright. And then now I can play the One Ring with Trickery backup. And then maybe next turn I can Firebrand and make the army my ring bearer to draw. And yeah, her opponent has seen enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. We've got the Firebrand, double flame, and hopefully get to our Storm of Saruman. And then we can start copying our spells to take over. Turn one Esquire. Don't think I need to firebrand the Esquire necessarily. Take one. And a Rider is a bit more threatening. So I could uh, firebrand that one. And then next turn maybe draw two with flame to keep hitting my land drops, we'll see. Ooh, Horn of Gondor will probably have to blow up here with flame before it gets out of hand. Yeah, when building my deck, I definitely had Horn of Gondor in mind as a pretty big threat. Luckily, we have main deck artifact removal. And Boromir can protect the team. Well, probably just hoping they can't answer Gandalf. And then next turn, Flame could be quite spicy. Now Flowering to pump the team as well. Esquire can also potentially activate here. So only Boromir attacking. And this now also has Ward 1. And I'll answer next. Okay, so... Flame of Honor seems likely here. If I have to pay the wards, then... I can't actually keep up Saruman's Trickery, which may be necessary. A lot of options. I can cast Flame now so that the creatures aren't indestructible in the opponent's turn. Could also copy Flame and then just kill two non-Boromir creatures, and if they sag Boromir, so be it. Yeah, I think I'll just uh, pass here and then likely to copy Flame with Gandalf and just not target Boromir. But now I've got the flexibility of tapping down as well. Would love for them to put something on the stack that I can counter with Trickery, but our opponent moves to attackers. So Asquire stays back to pump. Draw two, deal five. And then we'll go after the Lancer and the Soldier token, I think. And then copy an instant or sorcery. So Boromir is spared unless they want to sacrifice it here. Might a Deathless could be nice too. And then we'll take six. Could have also opted to just block Boromir and then Smite to just trade since we could pay the ward. It's gonna be a Rider next. Yeah, let's just counter that to make a Chum Blocker. And then what to do with Gandalf? Deal three. So this is now also legendary thanks to the flowering, getting ward 1 and extra power. Okay, so I've got quite a few options. Don't think I want to tap out for Storm just yet. I want to keep up some instant speed plays and uh, 
I can pass, maybe block Boromir with Gandalf, and then smite to send it back to the top, and take out the Esquire. And then I can still flash in Gandalf, something like that. Could also try to block Boromir and finish it off. Although I have to be careful with Esquire giving it plus one plus one. Another Esquire. That seems fine. Alright, our opponent has seen enough. Yeah, again, all of the Grey can take over a board pretty quickly. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Lots of cheap cantrips. This turn scolding I'll maybe keep up next turn. Opponent does the same. Let's just keep cycling. Find a Gandalf. So if we can amass an orc and then we can maybe uh, use Gandalf to draw extra cards once we find more tempted by the ring effects. And we've got a Firebrand to do exactly that. Opponent's also blue-red. All right, so we'll just pass with flame available. Fiery inscription I definitely need to counter since that's pretty scary in this type of matchup. Hit for one and then uh, plan to flash in Gandalf end of turn. At least there's the illusion of another counter spell so they may not tap out for Let's say the one ring here. It's gonna be a quarrel's end. That's fine. And sadly, they get to kill the 1 1, which would have uh, been quite helpful alongside Gandalf, but so be it. So now, Flame could draw two ends, destroy the 1 1. Can do so at instant speed. Another birthday escape. And now we can also firebrand at instant speed thanks to Gandalf. Bone goes upstairs so they can get a level 4 ring to deal more damage. And now is probably a good time to draw 2 and deal 5 damage. Our opponent smites their own creature, so maybe they think they can fizzle my draw 2 here, but since the draw 2 also specifically targets, that's not the case. So it's a bit different from, let's say, a cryptic command. So, take our draw. The one ring is nice. So we can play that. And hit for 2. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Two removal spells into a one ring. As long as we can resolve the ring, we should be all right. Let's see what our opponent's up to. Also turn one mountain. Plenty of removal in hand. So don't mind seeing planes here. Mary. Yeah, we could uh, just wait, take two, and then Firebrand to hang on to Smite for a three toughness creature. Gandalf's nice to see. So likely tapping out for the ring here. If our opponent plays a King Theoden, I can Smite it. Okay, Rally, so glad we've got Banditry. Probably going to be a pretty important card in the matchup. For now, take two. And a Lancer. So don't need to ban the tree just yet. Can play the ring. That'll help us hit our land drops for Gandalf. But I want to wait for the opponent to commit a few more cards before we wipe the board. Don't take any damage from the ring this turn. And I 
think we got a draw, since we risk missing a land drop otherwise. Don't need to draw again necessarily now. Could play Gandalf, since we don't have a 1 mana spell, otherwise I could maybe wait to play Gandalf and a 1 mana spell to get immediate value. So let's just tap out for it now. They may not have a ton of removal for it. Reprieve, okay, that can pseudo counter it here. We'll have to keep that one in mind if we go for banditry. So take three. And that's it. So I'm just gonna take my draw. Don't wanna upset the ring. Although I would like to hit my land drops. So for points holding on to Reprieve, might be better to flash in Gandalf, Friend of the Shire instead. Still hesitant to activate the ring, even though I would like to hit my land. Alright, let's go for it. That's good. So, can pass with Gandalf at 4 mana here, available alongside maybe a burn spell. A Lord of Westfold, we might want to smite. Can let him attack. And then Gandalf can block a 2 1. So I'm going to take 4 plus 2 more from the one ring, which starts adding up. If I don't find a replacement ring, I could be in trouble. So the question is whether to smite one of their attackers here. Maybe I should, since I have another smite for Lord next turn, if I don't want to cast a banditry. And then by exiling the Lancer it doesn't trigger at least. All land is good. So now I could play Gandalf the Grey, and then maybe copy Smite the Deathless. We're on a three turn clock from our own ring, so we better find a backup or close out to game soon. Sheriff seems acceptable, since we can just remove it here and get our creature back. So the opponent goes for Gandalf. I guess I should just smite now, that way I get to copy it. And our opponent has seen enough, alright. So we have a relatively fast clock here with double Gandalf, although would have still been kind of a sweat with our own one ring at 7 life, but I'll take it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand is pretty top-heavy, but at least we've got both colors and some decent early plays. So we'll give it a try. So we can smite on two, maybe draw two with flame on three. Still missing double blue for trickery. Put on planes cycling in the meantime. That is one potential way of fixing your mana, but the land cyclers aren't necessarily great in this style of deck. Okay, the bird that makes a 2-2. Two -two. I'll just take out the orc. Even though with uh, Banditry we could eventually wipe the board, just don't want to take too much damage early on. Flame's still gonna draw two, so we can keep hitting our land drops. And take one. Okay, Oath, that's fine, so might want to wait until they get the Spirit tokens to cast Banditry. So for now I could tap out for the One Ring, could hang on to Saruman's Trickery. Close call. I'll just play the One Ring here. Will make it easier to hit my land drops going forward. Haven't decided yet if I want to activate it end of turn or if I wait until my next turn to avoid taking one damage. Opponent's playing green for a Halfling as well. So the banditry is looking good. 
and another bird. Yeah, we need to survive one more turn before casting Banditry. And then I get to keep up Trickery to potentially counter something that would survive the damage from Banditry. So I'll just take my draw and be satisfied with one extra card. We found a lane, so I may not even have to activate the One Ring now. And yeah, let's just pass with Trickery available. Can also sack a food token to gain three. So five damage coming in. And a Pathfinder's fine since it dies to the banditry. So end of turn. Sack the food token. Probably okay to draw with the one ring now. Gandalf's nice. So banditry for two. We'll get a treasure token, and that way we get to keep a trickery once again. And our opponent has seen enough, understandably. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Got double trickery into a one ring. And now our Storm of Saruman could be a nice top end. If our opponent's got a powerful two drop, we could be hurting here, but nope. So pass it back. And a rider. Okay, that does hit pretty hard. But at least it didn't play it on turn two. And sure, we'll counter this, so we'll have a 1 1 blocker to get in front of the rider as well. And then I could tap out for the 1 ring, give them a turn to resolve something scary, and then go shields up on trickery again, because I do want to. Kind of refuel, so we're ready to copy spells with Storm of Saruman. Could have attacked for one since we prevent the damage here. But that's okay. Fire to destroy my land. That's rude. Okay. Can't argue with that. Oh no, opponents. The one ring is indestructible, so this is not going to work. This has happened to me a few times now. So, hit for one. And then we'll have to wait an extra turn on Storm of Saruman now. I'll hang on to escape as something to maybe copy with Storm of Saruman. Do I want to draw with the One Ring? Not really. Don't want to put myself under a faster clock when things are kind of under control as is. So next turn we can play our Storm. The Book of Mazarbul. Yeah, that seems fine. Gives us a target for Smite the Deathless. Dawn of a New Age. That one I could see being more threatening if it eventually draws a lot, but they only have the one creature in play, so be my guest. And then now get our storm in play. We are shields down, so opponent could resolve something scary. And I guess I'll offer the trade here. Or do I? Eh, maybe I don't. This could end up being useful if we draw four mana Gandalf to let us draw extra cards, or to become a ring bear. The Rosie can also grow the team. But we should still be able to handle all the opponent's creatures once we copy our spells. So Creeper, we probably want to exile so the ring doesn't tempt them. So what's our best sequencing here? I could Firebrand the 4-4 and then Smite the Deathless copies. Exile the 4-4, exile to Creeper, leave Rosie in play. That could be fine. And then I'll still have Trickery available. Yeah, 
I suppose I could have just cast Smite on the Took Reaper and then copied Firebrand to finish off the 4-4 four -four to level up the ring twice instead. Would have been slightly better. And I'll pass it back. Don't really want to trade for Rosie. Can copy our birthday escape next turn a bunch. Make a powerful ring bearer. So I don't feel the need to activate the one ring, which is a little risky if we don't find a backup copy. Firebrand's excellent. So maybe we copy the escape after firebranding Rosie, since I prefer the card draw. And then we'll have a level 4 ring bear here, dealing extra damage. Another Trickery's excellence, and the Bandit Tree is good insurance. So we have a pretty fast clock now. Definitely outracing our own one ring. And what to discard? Probably a land. Good banditry for zero, just to cast a spell so we can copy the next one with Storm of Saruman. And get to untap. So, we can start by attacking. And, yeah, I'm kind of into the idea of banditry for zero. Play escape, draw two. Alright, we found a backup ring. So now I'm okay activating the first one. Don't have to do it now since I want to keep up trickery. Smite the Deathless. Yeah, seems worth countering. It's not strictly necessary since I can just counter some future cards and amass and eventually find another way to tempt the ring. But uh, yeah, kind of want to close out the game here. And the orc is doing a reasonable job. Bowen's got her own banditry, fair enough. So that'll wipe the board. Bowen gets a treasure. And do I draw with the one ring now? Sure. Can draw again in my turn and play backup. Try to find a Gandalf here. There we go. Could tap out for Gandalf, but let's play it safe. Next turn I can play Gandalf with Trickery backup. Although I guess had I played Gandalf, it would have been copied by Storm of Saruman, which would have been pretty exciting. Can scold Theoden. Alright, nice. So now, how about we firebrand the opponents and then copy Gandalf with Trickery backup. That's going to close out the game in a hurry. Just waiting for my opponent to put something on the stack, which will pretty much kill them. Get to deal 6 damage with the Gandalfs. Take my turn. Could start drawing with the one ring since we have another one. Birthday escape is nice too. So let's maybe draw with the one ring. Play another one, and then copy the birthday escape. And then we can deal three damage, deal three damage, turn one of the Gandalfs into a ring bear, so it deals extra damage as well. And uh, that should be game here. Sweet, so glad we got to see our Storm of Saruman in action at long last. And there we go. So yeah, overall, pretty satisfied with how this Blue Red's Wizard spells deck turned out. 
Of course, the One Ring is a pretty messed up card, so if they were to redo this format, I would personally leave that one to the sidelines, or maybe make it more flavorful and limit decks to one copy of the One Ring at most, although I could see that becoming a bit of a lottery who gets to draw their One Ring. And then I would also maybe introduce more tapped dual lands for mana fixing, because right now, even with Shire Terrace and some of the basic land cyclers, mana bases are pretty terrible, so multicolor decks tend to be pretty clunky, and uh, it's always more fun when multicolor decks are viable. But yeah, besides those minor gripes, this is a very enjoyable format, and I would like to see more of it going forward, so you have a place to just play these Lord of the Rings cards by themselves, which is how it was meant to be. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.